well, cancer kills 10 million people every year, okay? Especially the one which is drug resistant. That is a cancer which comes back again, even when you treat with the best available drug that is in the clinics now. This cancer doesn't go away, it is metastatic. It really kills the people. So what is the solution? What do we have now? Engineering materials at the molecular level provides new opportunities to precisely develop weapon in the war against cancer. What is this weapon? This is a weapon which we make it in the smaller scale. The scale 100,000 times smaller than the width of the human hair. Touch your hair, we are going to make materials 100,000 times smaller than the width of the human hair. Cancer, in the year of 2019, in the United States alone, 1.7 million people and 600,000 people will be dead because of this deadly disease. Okay. Giving you in a different perspective, every day we are losing 1,600 people for this deadly disease of cancer. There are so many human cancers. Cancers are very clever. It goes to the organ and tries to develop a cancer in that organ. We, there are so many human cancers available. All the cancers that is in the white, fortunately we know how to handle it. We have some drug, we can save people. But the cancers that is in the uh, red, we don't know. We don't have any way to save people. These are all the type which comes back again, even when you treat with all existing drug that is available in the universe. This is the dangerous part. So we started after, with the last five years, we started what is the cancer that we need to work with. We chose lung cancer mainly for one reason. It is the deadliest cancer. As I said earlier, 10 million people are, will be dead uh, this year because of cancer. 2 million will be from the lung cancer. So it is the deadliest cancer. 25% to 20%, 20% to 25% of the patients will be dead because of the lung cancer. You can see that like 228,000 people will be diagnosed this year. 142,000 people will be dead because of this cancer. The statistics is no different in the state of Missouri. It is exactly the same. The deadliest cancer is lung cancer. So we thought five years ago, we will focus all of our attention, all of our research into this area of lung cancer. So we started understanding, as typically we would as an engineer, to understand how do we go about it. This is a lung tumor patient diagnosed with a lung cancer. We take a small tissue from the tumor and then we give it to pathology. The pathologists see a signature in the tissue to check what is the molecule they have, what is the signature they have. They do a biopsy and then they prescribe a drug. This drug works beautifully. One year, this patient is completely cancer free. You take an image, they don't have cancer at all. But after that, that 14 to 17 months, the cancer comes back again. Now with the uh, vengeance. The existing drugs, whatever you treat them in the first year, is not working with them anymore. So where did they get their superpowers from? We call that as a villain. You know, like a cancer is such as a villain. But the second step, it becomes a super villain. You are not able to conquer it, okay? So they find the strange resemblance of Avengers, okay? If you have not booked your tickets, go ahead and book it right now, okay? The Avengers Endgame, there is, there, is, there is a strange correlation here, right? Every Avengers movie, you have a villain and a hero. Hero kills the villain. But there are villains like Thanos. They don't die. They come to the next movie. So this is kind of a drug resistant villain. You know, like they come back again with a vengeance. How are we going to solve that? Okay, I want to show you that Ant-Man, the CNN covered like a three months ago. Ant-Man is the smallest of all the characters. They believe, I don't know, we will be knowing by the end of the day today, Ant-Man has a huge role to play in the end game for the whole Avengers series. Similar way, our particle is very small, okay? Probably we have a way to conquer cancer. Let us see what we have. I'm going to show you the severity of the disease, okay? This is a molecule that is being currently used. I used a molecular model, I treat it, one year, cancer goes away. Fantastic. After 14 months, the cancer comes back. This is a problem with the lung cancer. That's why that is, people are deadly. So where this cancer gets this superpower, okay? We call them supervillain. Where they get the superpower? Somebody has to give them power, right? The power comes from a gene, okay? gene or a mutation of a gene or a gene that is present inside that tumor that gets activated when you treat them with the drug. See one of the tricks what the gene does, okay? I treat them, this is a resistant cancer. Cancer takes the drug, the gene pulls it away, okay? It knows how to handle it. The gene teaches the cell 
this drug is going to be harmful. Remove that away. I don't want it to be here nearby. That is a problem, okay? So Dr. Grant allowed me to put some scientific part here. So this is our, our two years of our work just to identify the gene, the supervillain. Okay? We took the tissue, we analyzed thousands and thousands of genes. There are thousand genes that is possible. When you treat them a drug, another 1,500 new genes come up. Which gene is a supervillain? We don't know. So we started looking into each and every gene and understand whether this is the reason for the supervillain, if this is the power it gives. After two years of ordeal, we identified the gene. Not easily. We did a lot of work, okay? And then we identified two genes, okay? What, what we know in the literature, there are only one gene, right? We identified two supervillains now. The first villain is AXL and the second villain is FN14. This is the first time we found in the lung tumor history that these two genes speak with each other. They say to AXL to FN14, don't die if that drug comes in. FN14 says the same thing to AXL, don't die. I want this drug to be away. They speak with each other in a perfect way, choreographed way to keep the drug out. Okay? These two genes are very important in keeping the resistant, drug, resistant tumor alive. So there is a fundamental biology here. Okay? There is something called a silencing the gene. What does it mean by the silencing the gene? As it's exactly said. It silences a gene. It says, shut off. Okay? Don't work. Okay? The, what, what we use it is in this uh, process is called siRNA. Si meaning silencing, silencing RNA. This silencing RNA shuts these genes off. This we know in the biology. So we thought like, okay, we will know how to handle this cancer now. We identified the supervillains through our task. Now we know how to kill these genes, how to make this shut off this gene. So strategy is very simple. We wanted to take the siRNA, treat them. Now the two genes have come down, are shut off. Then both the genes are off. Now we put the drug, the drug has to be there inside. Strategy is very good, okay? Now our dream got shattered away into pieces when we knew this. SIRNA cannot withstand in the body for 10 seconds. When you put that with the blood, it goes into pieces. Okay? You cannot even detect it back. Within 10 seconds, you are making that into pieces. How can you make a drug out of it? So we thought like what we can do. That's where our engineering mind came out. Engineering at the molecular level is very, very tough. We started using a protein because body knows how to handle protein. We precisely kept, these are all called antibodies which takes the drug to the tumor. It is kind of a, a vehicle to take that to the tumor. The reason we placed it equidistance for this protective layer. This protective layer nicely covers on the top, and then we put this siRNA in between the protective layer and the protein. Why? Now even the blood cannot see it. I'm kind of smuggling the siRNA to the tumor, okay? If I can deliver it, there are big challenges. I can take it, whether I can deliver it, these are all big challenges possible. But still, we were hopeful. Okay? We were thinking like we can take the nanoparticle there and dispatch the siRNA there. And our nanoparticle were able to hold siRNA for 48 hours in the blood pool. See that back, siRNA can be there awake in 10 seconds in your blood pool, now we are able to do 48 hours. We were so happy and we are moving forward on that. Then how do we know that it works? We identified the gene, we know the culprit, we know the supervillain, we know the hero now, we developed a hero, now we wanted to take the tumor which the uh, patient gets the drug resistant tumor. We've implanted that on mouse. Okay, you can see that like this is an untreated mouse. Same tumor, drug resistant tumor. It goes like within 25 days, sky high. See what happened. Then I use the same clinical drug that is being used in the clinics. Goes down at 21st and goes up again. For a human, it takes one year for the resistant to build up. For the mouse, it is 21 day or 21st day. They, again, the tumor comes up. Now we went back our strategy. We want to shut off this gene and see like how it works. See how beautifully it works. There is no growth of the tumor. Amazing. And there is a slight shift at the 21st to, 21st to 25th day. That is mainly because of the statistics. One outlier was there, but we wanted to be truthful. This is the one strange data. No, we got it in every other model possible. Data is consistent. We were able to shut down these two genes which are speaking with each other, and we said, shut off, we want to make the clinical drug to work. And then we went for other drugs too, not even with the one drug, the one drug that is being currently being used in the clinics, we thought like whether it is going to work, same hypothesis, it worked beautifully. We were able to conquer the 
cancer. You are able to shut off this gene and conquer the cancer, at least in mouse model. Okay? We will all know by the end of the day today whether Ant-Man has any role to play in the Avengers. Okay? But we don't know when we will make our drug to go into the market. Remember, we are not making any new drug here. We are shutting off the gene. We are understanding the biology, engineering the materials in such a way that we can make a difference to the existing drug. Existing drugs are very, hard, very uh, expensive to make. It's more than two billion when it comes out. We will know that, like, whether ours work. Our, we, what we know exactly is we are going in the right path. Our path is correct. We are making uh, uh, important strides fast, and we will make Mizu proud. This is my last slide. This is just to show that like, I have a three major projects. And uh, thank you for your attention.